The following program is rated TV MAL. It contains strong language and is intended only for mature audiences. Welcome back to another episode of the Butcher's Bible Podcast. I'm your host, Luke. And I'm your guest host, Doug. I'm just two blokes preaching the good word of the meat industry. One episode at a time. Nice. I'm, I think I'm getting the hang of this. You are. You're getting good at it, mate. Yeah, well thank you. Thank you. Anna will be proud. He'll be proud. We'll see. Doug, thank you very much for joining me again today. As Ant- That is all right. And is what? What? What's wrong with it? Ant is currently undergoing surgery to have an extra two inches added. Right. But you can decide where. Yeah, let the people decide. We'll put let it to a, a larger consensus. <laughs> All the taller. Yeah, yeah. Oh, very good. Good to see you, man. Long time no see. I feel like it's been at least 24 hours. It has been a whole 24 hours <laughs> since I've seen your beautiful face. Yes. How was uh, How was your weekend? Yeah, weekend was good. I spent all of Saturday with you and your good lady. You did? It was good fun, huh? It was good. So we were at Smoke and Fire Festival in Malden, Essex. Why? Yeah. Where? How did you find it? It's all as before my hammer family talk. Oh yeah. Um It was alright. Pretty good. Yeah. It was good. Um it was more spread out than the Ascot one, obviously we'll get into right. that of the differences. But um oh, it was good. Good food, good chat, a lot more more people than I thought uh, were gonna be there that we knew. Yes, yes, there were quite a few faces. Yeah, shout out, Smokey Rebel, straight away to for giving us the uh, the tickets. I love yes, them. VIP tickets. Thanks, Mickey and uh, and Russ. Yeah, absolute absolute legends. I think we're both we're both wearing we are hats. both sporting Smokey Rebel hats now. Yeah. We're, we start we're not sponsored, but you no, know, not sponsored. we here, the Smokey Rebel cult. Is that what it was? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. How did you find it? How was your experience of Smoke and Fire? Yeah, it was really good. Obviously, I missed out on Ascot because I was working. You are. So, no, this is a nice opportunity to come up. And it was definitely, from pictures I've seen of Ascot, that definitely seemed to be butcher, 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 butcher. It was rowdy. Which is understandable because it was the butcher's wars. and Yeah. yeah. Whereas this Everyone got a bit was very much. Yeah. This was very much geared towards barbecues. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, you had Matt Black hosting a live fire cooking uh-huh. stage, mm-hmm. um, which is awesome. And some awesome chefs up there. Really good to meet him, actually, as well. Yeah, he's a he is the nicest bloke in the world. Yeah, and he was a did he compared for the the barbecue stage or whatever it was the fire stage both days. Yeah, both days. And he was non slow every time we went past. He was talking. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, God knows yeah. what his voice is like now. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so obviously that was nice, and obviously they had. Not that they was doing any of it. We were there Saturday, but they had the barbecue competition, didn't they? Yeah. So they were they were gearing up um, Saturday morning, yeah. pretty much getting all the barbecues ready, weren't they? By lunchtime, yeah. getting everything ready, marinated. I guess for an overnight cook for the for the uh, the actual competition testing sort of results on Sunday. Yeah. Although we definitely missed out by not going there today because I saw. Because Norfolk Smoke Pit, Poppy, she was there today. Right. And she was helping a couple of the team. She was helping the Pit Bitches. Shout out to the Pit Bitches. Pit Bitches. Awesome. No, that was awesome name for a barbecue team. But they made bacon ice cream. Really? I'm going to say that again. Bacon ice cream. Um, Do you know anything about it or just the name? <laughs> I just How- know that there was bacon Ice cream. <laughs> Any pictures? Can you describe it to us? Uh, wait, to be fair, it just looked like ice cream with crispy bacon <laughs> bits in it. Okay, right. Okay, uh, cool. I'm, I'm, I'm not here for it. I'm really like, here for it. it. So it wasn't just like pure bacon made in just cold. Yeah. Bacon but cold. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's ice cream. 
that's good. They look great. I mean, no, yeah, going back to yeah, smoking fire. It was yeah, food was good. It was busy, right near the actual music stage where it was all, yeah, all spread stage. apart, all very flat. Because in Ascot, it was there was many levels to it, and it, you could kind of you know uh, disregard the children's play area. You had the food and then the music, mm-hmm. but this was all very much one big circle, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, but. Yeah, beer's busy, warm. Yeah, I mean, I think I don't. I mean, we got there at what half eleven. Yeah, and I think the queue for the two bars never went down. Yeah, at all. It's quite to the point. I think people commented on how long the queue was, and you just saw them coming up with like four pints in one go. <laughs> yeah, seriously. So, yeah, they definitely un- underestimated the uh, capacity that people in Essex can drink, mate. Exactly, they can yeah. drink. <laughs> But I had good fun. You know, the food was good. We um, had some barbecue. You had the lamb. I did. Lamb flatbread. That was beautiful. And then uh, Kitty and I had the the slow-cooked pork belly. That was from Oink Mm -hmm. Barbecue or something, I think it was. Yeah, I think so, yeah. That was really good. No, Feast. Feast Barbecue. That was it. Really, really good. Did the the amount of, like, the the, the grill trailers that were there. Oh yeah, full on setup of these massive smokers on the back of trailer. Yeah. Just yeah, yeah. Send you can, kit. That's what it was. Yeah, and you can imagine the Americans just being like, "Yo, that's all. Those are baby grills." Like, yeah, exactly. They've got, you know, you just get sort of bigger and bigger trailers with fire coming out the top with wheels on. You're like, what is yeah. going on? I know, it's brilliant. Loved it. Great food. Great food. We had some gyros. That was good. I think you'll pronounce it's 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 pronounced gyros. I think we'll have some of them gyros. Gyros, squid gyros, please. <laughs> that was good food. Yeah. Um yeah, really, really cool. Oh. But talking of Americans as well, we met the sausage sensei, didn't we? Wild Bill. Say. Wild Bill Sausage Sensei. You know, you couldn't write him, could you? He's a real I, character. He's a proper Texan, isn't he? Yeah. What has he said to me that I didn't uh, quite understand? Where are you all at? Yeah, where y'all at? Where are y'all at? I looked at Mickey uh, from Rebel Grills. I was like, what? And he was like, let me be the interpreter. Where are you from? I was like, oh, okay. Uh, do, do, you do you know? Go to the look on your face. Do you know Tunbridge Wells? Of course he wouldn't fucking know. <laughs> so I was like, why is he asking me this? I'm here right now, right? <laughs> where y'all at? Good guy. Really funny guy. Yeah. Yeah, funny. I, I spoke to him today, actually. Just say it was you know, nice oh. to meet him and that. And he hmm. said they were uh, putting the uh, smoked squab sausage on the smoker. The corner. Oh, the pigeon. Squab. Wood, wood pigeon. Though, wood pigeon that they caught fresh yeah. from Greg's that morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Outside Greg's with a big yeah. net. With a big net. There's an American with a cowboy hat on catching pigeons out there. I know. Very good. It did look good that him and um, him and Russ were on the uh, on that tiny little demo stage, making uh, weighing things out, uh, bit slapping the sausage with flavour, as he would put it. Yeah, as he put it. But yeah, as as we said, I mean, he had all these different beautiful spices that he was weighing out individually for one batch of sausage for a good 10, 15 minutes. And yeah. you turned to me and went, "Do you imagine trying to do that in the shop?" Yeah, as you're also trying to serve and do everything else as well. It's like, you know, he definitely played up to the crowd, and he's a, he's a good showman, isn't he? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and then Russell's there Three trying to weigh stuff. weigh out four grams of turmeric or something. It made me laugh. Yeah, as they said on drug dealer scales. On it was little drug dealer scales, like yeah, little kitchen scales. It went up to like it went up to half kilo, and that was it. Yeah, <laughs> mad. It is funny. Yeah, I think they told them they had to weigh out the meat on that as well. 50 pounds of meat. That, yeah, they had to weigh... only goes up to half a pound. Yeah. <laughs> so good. <laughs> well, this fun. This fun. That's what they said. They, had, um, they were like, it's an experience, if anything. Yeah. yeah. But I just love doing stuff like that. I mean, it's only, what, my third or fourth like barbecue live fire festival I've been to, but just the vibe is just always... So good, just, especially with the people that you know there as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean, like Jay from Alton's Alton's Barbecue was there. He's always yeah. a good laugh. Um, yeah, uh, Rick from Slimrick Smokehouse. He's yeah, 
He's a bit of a legend. Redneck Barbecue. Redneck Barbecue, Russell, yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, just the vibe is just always so nice and chilled and just everyone's there just to have a, cook some meat and have a good time. There's What's no there? pretense yeah. or anything. Have like a few beers. Talk. Be like, yeah. what's up? What's up, brother? Yeah. yeah. It was nice. Yeah, stalwarts were there once again. Saw Tim and his, and his boy. I forgot his friend's name. I forgot. His boy uh, in the loud shirt. Yeah, it was very loud shirt, wasn't it? He did that last time. Nice. Could be his look. Could be his look. Um, yeah, you had, you had all your grills. You had your monoliths and your black stones and all that sort of stuff as well. Just good to see. And they they were all demoing this time. Yeah. In um in Ascot they weren't. Right. Okay. It was literally just like a show store, a lot of the time. Right. But um, pretty much every grill, may that be like the barrel, barbecues, mm-hmm. um. Uh, Blackstones, and even over on the on the Yeti stall, they were cooking some stuff up as well, weren't they? Yeah, yeah, on the uh, PKs, yeah, 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 like everywhere. It was, it was great. It you was to a barbecue show and not like the barbecue. I, suppose. I know, I know. But it was what was different between Ascot and so you're right with uh, Malden, 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 Mal- Malden, Malden. Yeah. It was. It wasn't as rowdy. Maybe because like there wasn't half a ton of butchers there. That's it. That's literally it. <laughs> so all the butchers weren't getting absolutely fucked up. Yeah. So it was more. I would say it was more civilized, but we mm-hmm. didn't remember we were still in Essex. So yeah, right. Yeah. But grand scheme of things, there wasn't a huge sort of like backstage as there was in the book where the butchers butcher wars was. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um. It was still good fun, wasn't it? Yeah, really good. It's yeah, I think. Oh, that pork belly that was really, really tasty. It was. It was. And big shout out again. I got to see all of the Rebel Grills, which I'm absolutely in love with. They are phenomenal. They are it's sexy a grills. Yeah, they are. If you haven't checked out Rebel Grills, you need to. The Ace, the Ranger, the Scout, the just yeah, they're beautiful. Yeah, one day. Yeah, Kitty picked up the small. Was what's the smallest one? Scout. The scout. It still easily weighs twenty five kilos. Yeah, but as Mickey said, if it's, it means it's good if it's heavy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's such a guy. I love him so he much. Is. He's a well, see, he had a bit of a heavy head, and he was like, "I think I'm going to go get a milkshake," which was the last thing I can imagine him go get. Right. No, no, no. He's a real guy, real guy, and yeah. yeah, he set us up with them tickets and. Real shout out to, to the Rebel Grills guys. Yes. Russ and Miffy. Oh, and what did you get? You got more of their um, seasonings, didn't you? You got the bonus. Yes, I did. I loaded up on what, SPG, what, what, Smoky what, Rebel what? SPG. I absolutely love it. It's just salt, pepper, and garlic, which probably some chefs out there would go, well, you can put that together yourself. Well, yeah, I could. But also, I've got the convenience of having it. In a can, right next to the barbecue, ready to season. It's good, and it seasoned. It seasoned my steak lovely tonight. Whilst I cooked, so yeah. What do you have? Wagyu. Oh, Wagyu where from? Line. A middle farm. <laughs> Give them family. Yeah, certainly. Well, it's just an end piece that you know can be. It's too small really to sell. I might as well just make sure quality control and all that, isn't it? Yeah, shame that you have to have it. So. Although, talking about it, mm-hmm. would you like to hear a story about Doris and her steak? About Wagyu? Yeah. Got I know, I know Anne, Anne has a real bee in his bonnet about people coming in to buy steaks for the dog. Well, that was me because... Oh, that was you. It was me. <laughs> this, is, this is going back to one of the first five episodes yeah. where I... Um, Express my disappointment when people come in to buy prime steaks for their animals, but ground, like a ground prime steak, can you yeah, mince yeah. rump, can you mince fillet, can you mince whatever, or buying it as a steak itself. Yeah. The dog, the dog isn't going to know if it's shin or chuck or fillet. Okay, It'll probably enjoy the shin more because it has to chew, and that, really, yeah. that releases dopamine within the poor little canine's head. You know? <laughs> 
<laughs> it's like it is completely irrelevant that you're you're buying the most expensive thing to make yourself feel good about yeah. the dog. When actually, which actually, the dog will not chew it. My my dog doesn't. You know, she gets periodically gets like little 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 bits from the from the butchery. Doesn't even touch the sides. No, but that is uh, yeah, that's quite expensive bit of meat you just you eat. Yeah, and it's pure sustenance to them. But in in light of entertainment, Doug, yeah. please please tell me what happened. So I had two gentlemen come in today and peruse my wares. Two fancy fellows. Two fancy fellows. Yeah. And they saw the wagyu, saw the sirloin, and mm. said, "Can we have two steaks off of that, place? So yeah, not a problem. You've got absolute touch result. Yeah. Nice. So cut two two steaks as I was weighing them up. And said, oh, we do spoil our dog. And I sort of laughed thinking that they're joking. They're joking. And uh, weighed them up. So two steaks, £25 each. Wow. 50 quid's worth of Wagyu sirloin on the on the scale. Yes, we do spoil our dog. I sort of looked at them and laughed. And went, yeah, right. No, really. He's um he's been unwell. We we have been feeding him uh, Philip from our butchers, but we thought we'd give him a special treat. I'm just gonna like, hang there for a second. They had been feeding it Philip whilst it's been ill, but for a special treat, they upped it to Wagyu. So, did you yeah. ask? What, did you at least ask what kind of dog it was? No, I didn't. I didn't These are the things that. Point. These are things that people need to know, Doug. I didn't care by that point. I just knew that I was now doing dinner for a dog. But the worst thing is, after the, I don't know. I, after I'd wrapped those sorry. up, I said, is there anything else I can get you? Oh, we haven't got ourselves anything. Can we have four sausages? No. I'm yes. sorry, my, my camera's gone really fuzzy because of this now. There we go. There we go. But yeah, they had their own dinner four sausages whilst they took 50 quid's worth of I'm sorry. Steak for them. I'm sorry. No. That is absolutely outrageous. Do they it just spend like that much shame, money? At the end of the day, it's money in the deal. It's a sale. I know. Who am I to dictate what I know. customer I get that. For. I get that. But, you know, are they going to come back next week and say, and say the dog thought that steak was lovely? I keep checking Google reviews to see if there's a review for the dog. <laughs> Your steak was rough. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, that took you way too long to come up with that pun, by the way. I did, I did. You saw my eyes go. I had to think of a joke. Saw your eyes go. Oh, dear. I just... I just think that steak is better off going to some... Going to some... Per, a person who would appreciate it mm. and come back as as a repeat custom. I get... This is, this is a repeat custom over a one-time purchase. Yeah. No, I get that. And I know that we should take what we should get, we can get as butchers, but it just really winds me up. But they might really enjoy the sausages and come back. <laughs> what was it they have? Uh, traditional pork. Oh, suck it out. So, yeah. So, yeah, that was my day today. <laughs> <laughs> How was your day today? Well, do you want to know what happened in my day? I got a text from my mum. Mm hmm. She said, look where we are. Where were they? And it was a picture of the middle farm counters. What is it? <laughs> yeah. It was actually. It really was. I can show you my phone, yeah. So well, my mom, today? Today, yeah, today. I wasn't I wasn't gonna send it to you because then you'd be like you'd be like like looking out, see like see if there's a woman that looks like me. And my stepdad who looks no one like no no one in like me. Yes, mate. If you did. When my mum was like, she said, it's a good, sh it, we had a good little snoop and we kept our mouths shut. Like, Why did they keep their mouths shut? I know, like there was going to be, like there's some big secret at her foot. Yeah. Absolutely. We're Luke's parents. Shh. I know. Don't tell anyone. Absolutely hilarious. Look. Ta-da. <laughs> oh, well, at least it looks like a good counter. To be fair. At least it's a full she counter. It was full. Yeah, it's a full counter. And she sent me that at 12.37. So you must have gone out for your vape by that point. Oh, may well have done, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm gutted! I didn't get to get to meet Mama Luke. Yeah, uh, yeah. I thought that was real funny. I was like, I'm going to tell Doug this that my mother was there buy buying all the rear eggs. Oh, did she? <laughs> no, she didn't. They haven't been in stock actually. I'm um, sorry. I'll go out to the field to speak to the rears and say 
squeeze into Luke demands his giant <laughs> like giant eggs uh, it is funny though because when I got those I um, I mentioned uh, I was like uh, when I show these receipts to my accountant he's going to be wondering, wondering why I'm ex- I'm uh, putting these all through his expenses <laughs> can't keep putting massive eggs through his ex- business expenses but it was why not it was my lunch yeah that's a business expense. You have to boil them for 20 minutes. I think I've said this in a previous episode. Is it 20 minutes? To do a soft boil, it's 20 minutes. Well, they're big old eggs. Imagine the size of the soldiers you've got to have to dip it, to dip that. We just don't get, like, several <laughs> baguettes. Yeah. I know, they are big, big eggs. I had it on my Instagram a few a few weeks ago. Big, big eggs that are, like, I had to use a cleaver to, like, chop off the top. Mm-hmm. And then the big scrambled egg. And my my daughter, I think Kitty ate it all. The dog had some as well. So it's just fun. like feeling like a caveman though, don't you? Like it's a dinosaur egg or something. That's it. It's it's yeah. It's quite the spectacle to have in your old hand. But yeah. I sent him the spies today to make sure the counter was all alright. <laughs> How dare you? She was like, There's a lack there's a lack of goat sausages. Lack of what? Goat sausages. There's good amount to go in this week. <laughs> she didn't say that at all. I'm just trying to trying to rile you up. Oh, you're trying to rile me, I see. Yes. No, just trying to rile you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Is this because of all the uh, close-ups of your face? I took no, that was, it was actually really funny because you had Kitty laughing because the one where I was like, please stop. Yeah. Please stop. That was really That's good. my favourite one. And then the, the one where she like, you, you panned around and you made me, I was like, like jumped. Yeah. Comically. That was good. Uh, and I had her laughing. But as soon as I saw on your Instagram the the cover photo, yeah, the cover photo was the close up that I took of you, yeah, being me from afar, where I'm like this, yeah, when you hadn't realised I was taking a photo, yeah, <laughs> when I was taking cinematic shots of uh, Russ on the grill, yeah, I was taking cinematic shots of you, of me, as it was most of the day. But I liked that there was a continuing theme, and I appreciate it. It was good fun. You know, it's not often when I've got an idea for something that I'm going to post on Instagram, I follow through and remember to do it all day. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Your half done spin shots. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, I did full spin this time, but uh, beer and barbecue, yeah. Mm. I did a lovely spin shot of the empty field, and I thought later on I'm going to do a lovely sh- spin shot of the field full. Mm. And then I forgot. And then probably forgot, yeah, because we were so busy. Everything. So now I just have a video on my phone that's just of an empty field next to McNeil. <laughs> so you spinning with me spinning and Simon in the corner, Simon yeah. Maynard in the corner. That was good. Any other fun things happened today? Not for me, if I'm honest, mate. It was just a day of the block. Serving, serving, yeah. filling. Yeah. G- good day, Biz. Yeah, good day. Good day. It's always a bit weird for us this time because uh, Eastbourne, Airborne. So the air show down on Eastbourne Seafront is going on or it's just finished this weekend. Is that allowed back on? Yeah. Yeah, it's been back on for the last few years. Oh, I don't know. But, um, yeah, that always kills trade sort of coming from the Eastbourne direction because no one can get out of Eastbourne, really, because everyone's going into Eastbourne. That's so like flying around. They can't yeah, get in. exactly. So, but no, it was good. It was good. Cool. I think now that we've had a bit more of a consistent summer with the weather... We are getting more, more and more barbecue trade. So you say a consistent summer. It's been a week of warm weather. Yeah, that's consistent in my book. <laughs> Don't this year. This year has been such a freaking washout. It's been mm-hmm. it's been on and off. I think in total we've probably had two weeks of good weather, sunshine of good sunshine. I would definitely say barbecue trade doesn't feel as barbecue as it has done in previous years very true mm. very true well my what weekend you do today um i went up to essex again north of where we were yesterday in malden mm. uh to humphreys and sons butchery far- and farm shop uh for a team, team gb training day very exciting Shout out to Elsie for setting that up as well. How was that? Brilliant, mate. It was good. It, it was more of a um, 
just a catch up and a sort of a place to refine and create products of of uh, out of things that we don't have products for. And obviously, you're not going to describe any of those products on here. No, there was pork <laughs> and chicken and a little bit of lamb, and that was it. That was it. Yeah, beef is going to be in Scotland. Fair enough. But yeah, it was it was just a bit of like an R and D day, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, Mia, Connor, myself, Ben, Elsie, and Stig. So it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't the whole um, uh, English lot and all the the Scottish guys. They were up in Scotland, obviously, uh, at, at Stephen Strachan's shop. Right. Okay. Doing their own sort of like training session, which is good as well. Yeah. So, you know, taking a taking a leaf out of some of the other teams' books and doing sort of like modular training sessions outside of our allocated bigger team sessions. If you see, yeah, I mean, um, which will work, which will work. But um, you know, obviously, there's conversations which will be had within the smaller groups, which need to be brought um, to the larger groups. Yeah, and managed well. Yeah, um, but it was it was good. It was good to see Connor. Connor was really Connor Ringrose. This is um, he was just trying to refine what his theme and products were because he's right. Going, he's going for the um, the apprentice right. Okay, category. Yeah, he's got some good stuff, man. He's got some good yeah. stuff, and he's just refining his techniques. He was asking us sort of like the more senior butchers um, how would he had it? He had he had it down, but he was like, "How would you do this?" And he's taking little bits from everyone, and um, he was really going for it. And Mia was just trying to, re- she was refining products whilst trying to make use of uh, other bits that would have necessarily would have gone to, would have gone to trim. Right. Okay. Yeah. So she's trying to utilize those before they are destined for the trim. If you see what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, Ben was just being a wizard. And she uh, does. Yeah, and so was Elsie as well, and and Stig was just in a, in his little corner creating some beautiful little things, and yeah, it was just good fun. I had a real creative constipation when I first got there because I'd had um, I'd, to, I'd had to borrow a car because my car's broken once again, and it was a bit of a drive, and I think I just I just got there in a bit of a bit flat. Plus, you'd spend the day before with me, and that's draining for anyone. <laughs> yeah. I was absolutely exhausted from spending a day out in the sunshine with Douglas. That's what I said to them. And they were like, oh, we totally get it. Yeah, totally get it. They are like, go have a nap. Go have a nap. Yeah. <laughs> um, but once I, once I got going, I got a couple of, I got a couple of products in, and um, it just starts, you, you just start thinking that, that way. Yeah. You know, and all these guys are in their creative sort of uh, zones, Consistently creating value-added stuff. Yeah, they've just got that edge, and I, I, I kind of had to come into it a bit, sort of um, hitting the ground running today, which was, you know, I tripped a little bit at the beginning, but then I kind of caught up to myself. Well, I'm guessing that's what all these team days are about, though, isn't it? It is collabing with each other and putting ideas from each other, and yeah, just being a team as such, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I helped. You know, um, I, I, I would like to say I, I showed. Connor, how to just um, do some stuff and refine a technique, and he was like, "Oh, result." And then Stig was like, "How about you do that and this?" And it was all—it's all just like coming together. And then me was like, well, "How would I finish this product off?" She had a great a pork product, and she was like, "What can I do?" I feel like this is a bit sort of—it's about like ninety percent done. And she just she just asking the group, and it's just nice to have like-minded people just chip in. Yeah, there's no right or wrong answers. Like, no, you can go, nah, I don't think that's it, or you can go, right, I'll give that a go. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, I'm sure they had the same up in Scotland as well. Nice, but it's good fun, you know. And um, serious, serious unit they've got up there, man. Is it? Yeah, it's an abattoir as well as a farm shop and processing unit. So it's got the whole the whole shebang. Oh yeah, and they've just had a recent sort of refit as well, which is quite the pretty penny, right? Yeah, and as, as all refits are to be fair, absolutely beautiful. The fridges could fit. I mean, you saw my flat. The fridge, one of the fridges could fit like three of my flats in it. 
double levels Jesus. as well. So they're having I like know. whole beef. I'll send you some videos after, like whole beef rails. Wow. And they've got a pork fridge, a pork fridge, which could probably fit about 120 pigs in it. Jesus it is, it is an absolute That's insane. It is huge. They, they're going to have some serious gear flying through there. Yeah. You know, this, and it's just, they're, it's incredible. And where we were, even just cutting, you know, I thought I had a nice space, quite a nice sort of, I know it's small in good trees, yeah. um, but it's like, it's efficient. But this was just like space. They had the minces, which lifted up the huge bowl trolleys, you know. Oh, right, yeah. Up yeah, and yeah. In, in the top of the mincer, and then a mincer blade that was like as big as my face, you know, those sort of things. It's just unreal. Mental. Serious gear. And then the vacuum, the biggest vacuum sausage filler that you can get. Yeah. Just like serious gear. And it's just... Just takes things to another level. It does. And you just sit there and you go, this is actually quite an insane trade to be in. Mm. Like, this is the sharp end of like feeding the country. You know, you can get, you, yeah. can have, you can have all your little artisan butchers, which I absolutely love. And I'm such a shop geek. The, I, I love going into the backs of the shops and just seeing how it works and and but this is like real large scale shit yeah. which, fe- which feeds the masses and it's something to behold it's brilliant wow so shout out Humphreys it's amazing great. yeah and the fact they put up with us and you know all the stuff that we made today they're going to be selling tomorrow so good luck with that <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a selling point. You know, Luke made that. They're like, ooh. <laughs> Throw it away. <laughs> that was good. But, yeah, I'm excited for what's going to happen. Because when's the next one? You've got, another, you've got a big train station coming up in Scotland, didn't you? Two weeks. Two weeks' time. Two weeks' time. Beginning of, beginning of um, uh, September, we are all descending upon Dundee in Scotland. Nice. So... It should be good. Should be should be good. I'm de- you know, people plan to fly up. I'm electing to drive up because really still, still I think so with no okay. car. So we'll see how that works. I was going to say good luck with that one. I'm. It remains to be seen. I might have to buy an emergency plane ticket. Okay. But I would also like to have a car when I'm up there because there's a, there's an issue of getting from. Edinburgh to Dundee. Yeah. As well. And people are coming and landing different times. So there's not going to be somebody there at all times. And there's an extra cost. Right. I'll give my dad a call, see if he'll give you a lift up. No way. It's just hey. so exactly. Hey, pal. Although what I might do is get my dad to turn up at the airport, take a picture of you, and then not actually say who you are, and then send me the picture and say, I saw Luke today. Yeah. Well, like, is this him? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's him. Leave him alone. Just like your mum did with my counter. <laughs> yeah. Good. Mm-hmm. It's funny. Like ships in the night. Yes. So. So I had a fun idea. Please. I don't have them often, but I do have a fun idea. So, obviously, last Monday was my first time on the podcast as a host, as a host which yeah rather exciting and uh i got i had i was contacted by uh we'll call them a fan i'm gonna yeah. call them a fan which i hate it <laughs> but um yeah hannah and hannah that i work with at middle farm mm. and her mum sharon they were in paris for the week and they listened whilst in paris it did so you may have seen on the socials that uh yeah they is it the Louvre? Is that the posh gallery in France? Where the old the Louvre? strange uh, French pyramid. Yeah, with the, pi- with the pyramid thing. Is that the Louvre? Yeah, the Louvre. I'm not very yeah. good with art. Yeah. Blanc so, yeah, so they took a picture of them there with the podcast yeah. they were listening to um, and Moulin Rouge. They listened to it, Moulin Rouge. So I thought it might be quite fun for people to send in on the old socials pictures of where they listen to the podcast. Very good idea. Although... Knowing most butchers, are we just going to get pictures of toilets around the back of shops going, oh, I listen to it when I'm over the poop. Yeah. Or lots of steering wheels. Yeah. Like I'm yeah. driving. Just doing what I'm driving. Yeah. But, yeah, if you do listen somewhere interesting, send it in on the other socials. 
get a little get a little compilation going and uh yeah. obviously leave your name and where it is i just don't want a picture of like a of some woods that would be really yeah. creepy i listen to it out here when i'm chopping wood <laughs> and people and people when i'm hunting down people yeah um that's a great idea i'm yeah. i'm totally down for that cool not overstepping my boundaries of producing as well as hosting <laughs> no not at all that's a good one i mean we we uh we look at uh, the analytics, let's say, mm -hmm. of, where, of where it's listened to on um, YouTube and Spotify, and uh, and is just baffled that we get some people in like Mongolia, really listening. Yeah, you get a listen in Mongolia, or someone's at least come across it and clicked on it in Mongolia. Amazing! Ah, like, reach out. My geography is so bad. Where is Mongolia? Is that South America? No. Africa. No, it's like, uh, that's near China. It's like Tibet. Oh, it's that way? Yeah. That's a long way. And there's nothing in Mongolia. No. Like, nothing. Well, there is. There's there's one listener of the Butcher's Bible podcast. Yeah. That's Ant. Where do you think he is? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's flying that's around the world. That's where he's having the surgery. <laughs> he's flying around the world, just listening to the podcast, and he's just upping the stats. Mm-hmm. Love you, Aunt. Thank you, mate. Love you. Yeah. He's exhausted. Not surprised. Although he did put up a picture of a nice hunk of meat today. I know. That looked pretty good, didn't it? All right. Clearly someone's busy. Where's a construction worker getting that much meat from? <laughs> it was good. That is good. Yes, he is. Um, right. What else are we on? I mm -hmm. have a story for you. Oh, I love a story. I would say a story. I would say an article. Oh, okay. Heading over to the newsroom. Dun, 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 dun. When's it loading? Keith's going to put a jingle in for that. I hope so. <laughs> but... <laughs> God. I'll ask him to, and he'll be like, do you know when? What uh, What? Uh, second or what minute it happened? And I'll go, no. No. No, I don't. Early money, Keith. <laughs> I mean, you don't listen to every single one that you edit? All right. Okay, so the headline, mm -hmm. a law to ban dog meat will take effect soon in South Korea. Good. Good. That's what I think. Yeah. So, um, uh, to, to South Korea's law to ban the act of breeding or slaughter of dog farms, as well as the distribution of dog sourced meats came into effect on Wednesday as the country is working to compensate over 5,600 shops in the domestic dog farm industry on the verge of shutdown. That's a lot of shops that are trading in dog meat. I know. It's mental. I know. It's, it's quite incredible that it's still as sort of prevalent in modern culture. I mean, South Korea is quite a modern, forward-thinking country. Yeah. Are they the only country that eats dog meat, or is there others? I'm not sure. Um, Ant and I had the had a conversation of where, of what mad stuff he's eaten. You may have heard of a uh, a segment called Red Duck, Green Duck. Yes, yes. And uh, he made me choose between some foods which were quite out there, and one of them was yeah. dog meat. And uh, uh, it was whether I had to choose which one. I thought he hadn't eaten. So it was like mm -hmm. a, ferment a fermented duck egg, uh, dog meat, some weird noodle dish with some insides in it or something. Right. And uh, it was the noodles that he didn't eat. So he'd eaten like the mad egg and the dog meat. And he said okay. he went to a farm and they pretty much had free ranging dogs specifically for meat. I can't remember where that was. It could have been somewhere within the Thailand region. Yeah. And he said it was really good. He said he had it twice, in fact. Wow. Yeah. But it's just it's just quite incredible that you know they have they really do have this differentiation between pet and food. Yeah. You know. Or well, no, we do. They don't. Yeah. And I guess there is an argument to be made, you know. There are people out there that say that, you know, if, if, if you can eat meat, i.e. like beef and 
you know, lamb, chicken, and that. Why? Why can't you? What? Why are you stopping yourself from eating other stuff as well? Yeah. Well, people but, that pigs are as intelligent as dogs, apparently. Yeah. But I just I can't get my head around the idea of eating dog meat. Maybe if I had a pet pig who's currently curled up by my feet, then <laughs> I'd think differently on eating pork. But as soon as you think of dog meat, you think of your pet, don't you? Yeah. Very true. But also, I did mention this, um, but it wasn't really touched upon. Would there be different breeds of dog, as in, you know, Sussex, Wagyu, Hereford? Yeah. Would you have, like, St. Bernard, uh, German Shepherd, Doberman, yeah. Spaniel, Jack That's Russell? Spaniel? Mine's a Spaniel. <laughs> you know... Would would they have specified that, or is it just like a largely populated hound mix? So hey, I'm guessing they're not going to be pedigree breeds in these dog meat farms, are they? But they've got to be healthy, free mm-hmm. range, be free from pests. It's got to be it's got to be a breed, otherwise it will just yeah. get all fucked up from shit breeding, much like other livestock. But we we digress. There is now a ban. So what will happen to those dogs now, though? I'm unsure. But those in uh, dog farming industry are looking to transition their businesses uh, and they are seeking state funding to renovate their business facilities. Cat farming? It's, yeah. <laughs> Cat, into cats. I think, I think they like cats too much, you know? Yeah, probably. But the fact that it's 2024... Mm-hmm. And they are now just banning dog meat. No, it's but bad. Dog meat consumption on the Korean Peninsula has been a centuries-old practice, as some believe dog meat specifically helps humans restore stamina. So rather some... have a Red Bull. <laughs> the science is there, right? Because dog blood right. contains more hemoglobin and it's thicker. Than human blood, and their their ox- oxygen exchange rate within their lungs is so vast. Right, they are their dogs are their respiratory system is just elite. Yeah, and um, so maybe it says it's age old, right? Centuries old. There could be a, a previous belief of like eating something that has these. Uh, specifics or uh, properties Mm -hmm. can transfer to the human biome by eating it you know it just still feels mad to me to eat a dog (laughs) I know but people keep rabbits as pets yeah and that's sort of like bordering on the line there isn't it because chickens I mean we've we've got guinea pigs out in the garden and they they eat them on sticks mate over over there Somewhere. I don't know what's over there. Uh, Where have South, they eaten? South America somewhere, isn't it? South America, yeah. Yeah. Probably, probably in New Guinea. Yeah. But yeah, because guinea pigs, again, they were introduced as four meat, weren't they? I believe so. It's only us white honkies, I think, that have domesticated <laughs> them. <laughs> yeah. Very much so. But here we go, white honkies. Go on. In the meantime, Korean black goat meat is experienced a price hike as it it is perceived as an alternative option for dog meat eaters. Okay. In the latest estimate by Korea Black Goat Association, if you've never heard of them, you do now. Shout out. The wholesale price of black goat meat came to 20,000 won per kilogram as of June. Which right. I don't know. I don't know what's what price is conversion rate. <laughs> I, know, I know. I don't know. But that's fifty percent up. I know. As of three years ago. So is, are they saying goat is very similar to dog? I think so. So am I using that as a marketing technique with the goat that I sell? People never try it. I've never eaten dog before. It's very yeah. similar. Or if they go, oh, don't like goat. Like, Do you eat dog? Yeah. That's a good job. <laughs> Middle farm dog meat, the sign, the new sign. Whereas if that's the case, does that mean then, well, because I mean, obviously, 
goat is very similar to lamb, obviously, we know. Yeah. But so is dog like lamb. Don't know. Which dog? I don't know. Which breed? Yeah. It's a funny one, isn't it? Because if anyone else has who's listening has eaten dog meat, get in touch. Let us know what it's like. I'm assuming it's best slow cooked. Mm-hmm. Because I can imagine it would be crazy chewy if you cook it wrong. It has to be done something with dog, isn't it? I don't know. That sounds quite dodgy, but he must have done something with a dog. <laughs> <laughs> He's done something with a dog. Not David Cameron and the pig. <laughs> no. But that was a good that was a good one that I thought um Hey, it uh, sparked a conversation, mate. It did. It did indeed. It did indeed. Here's another one there for you. Go on. Are you ready? That when was this written? I don't want to get it wrong. Uh August seventeenth. This was posted, which was yesterday. Yesterday, yeah, and that uh, that dog meat one was posted last week. New Zealand sheep production is set to fall. Oh, which is that down? If you didn't know, yes, yeah. The New Zealand Why? sheep flock has been falling consistently for decades with numbers falling from 39.3 million in 2003 to a record low of 24.4 million in 2023 over the same period sheep meat export volumes have been remarkably stable due to the combination of falling domestic consumption and steadily increasing carcass weights interesting yeah so is there less are they saying they're not they're exporting, obviously, hogget rather than lamb. I'm assuming so. Yeah. yeah. So it's so it's less bodies, less heads. Yeah. But uh, the weight is still up there, just due to larger animals. But for the longest time, New Zealand lamb has been the go-to. If you couldn't, it's always been got, seen as the pinnacle, isn't it? Yeah. If you couldn't have got British, well, it's uh, not necessarily the pinnacle, but it's always accessible because of their climate. Yeah. Yeah. Because obviously in the winter, we're not going to be getting new lamb in when they have the no. climate to be producing lamb, block sort of lambing almost year round. That's what I've yeah. they've done. Yeah. Because yeah. it's just at such a temperate environment in some places there that you can get like effectively spring lamb all year round. All year. Yeah. In huge numbers. It's quite incredible. But yes, I mean, it, as with all things, it probably comes down to a business and money decisions, doesn't it? If they're, if the farmers are ever getting paid per kilo dead weight or whatever, or the exporters. Yeah. They're of, but they've only got sort of, because there's levies and things on that and what they can ex- export and import and all that before they have to start paying extra. Yeah. They're going to be able to get more bang for their buck, sending a larger a larger weight out than yeah. I don't know I'm guessing if it's all the same if the weights haven't gone down I don't know I'm sounding like I'm pretending that I know what I'm talking about that's exactly what we do here on the Butcher's Bible podcast that is literally it it's on the back if you read it let's just pretend yeah um, I think it's funny like with their costs going up and as well as the UK which I feel could be one of their biggest buyers Mm -hmm. the UK championing their own lamb for the last few years could that have had a knock on effect of supply into the country on the New Zealand lamb or is it fairly marginal sort of effect because places were still buying and are still buying New Zealand legs of lamb and shoulders etc yeah plus there's a big rise in there I mean there's a lot you see a lot of, especially at Easter time, you see a lot of Australian lamb. Yeah. In the shops and the supermarkets. Do you get offered that? It's all ever when you don't, uh, you don't have your supply of your lambs going through. Yeah. I mean, one one supplier or another has usually got some sort of deal that they're offering on Australian lamb. Not that we ever buy it in, but yeah. 
Yeah. It does seem to be. I mean, when I worked for Booker's, that was one of their main kind of, that was one of their big ticket items, as it were, for the butchery was the Australian boneless lamb legs. Stack them yeah, up. Get... Yeah, I mean, they would have, there would be containers in every week to wow. the central distribution to send out. So I definitely think there may be something to that in terms of more getting imported from Australia rather than New Zealand. Hmm. I mean, isn't that? What else does it say? Do, 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 do. Over 2023 and 24, increases were seen in ship, ship? In sheep meat exports, with New Zealand exporting 414,000 metric tonnes of sheep meat. 4% more than the previous year. So yeah, more hog it, less that. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, exports to China fell by 14% <laughs> over 2023 to 24, meaning the increased production largely went to the United Kingdom and the United States, as well as New Zealand itself. Uh, the New Zealand domestic consumption rose by 12%. So, it's not that they're not exporting as much, they're just they're keeping more to themselves. But that's good. That's a good thing. I think so. Even at homegrown. Yeah. It's what we're all about. Yes, very much so. It's not very well written, this article. As a professional journalist myself. <laughs> <laughs> Your journalism degree, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. That that I uh, wrote on a bit of paper. It's funny, isn't it? Um, one last little bit. Do, 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 do. Over the past few months... No, sorry, let me start again. Much of the increase in slaughter came from the North Island, which saw a dry and hot conditions over the summer. Over the past few months, conditions have normalised on the North Island and slaughter has begun to come down. In June 2024, slaughter fell by 16% from last year to 1.1 million heads. That's still a lot of animals. No, it's a hell of a lot of animals. It is. You know, they're serious. They've got, they're like, they're outnumbered like, what, four or six to one by sheep to people? Something like that, isn't it? Yeah, it's quite incredible. Uh, over 90% of New Zealand's lamb and mutton production is exported. Uh, decreases in production have a direct impact on export volumes, obviously. The historically small flock and improved seasonal conditions make a rebuild likely, which were which would reduce competition for Australian lamb and mutton in the global market. Can't we all be friends? Just be friends, guys. Yeah. You know, it's all just... It's a funny one, isn't it? Because I, because I, I first started the first lamb that I ever worked on was New Zealand lamb. That was the first lambs that I ever learned. Right. Learned to break into three, and of what we got in was great lamb. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you want to champion your own country's lamb. We have some great stuff in this country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got supermarkets that are trying to they're championing British produce, but they're trialing buying in. New Zealand and Australian legs of lamb. Yeah. When it's actually, always the same. It's always been that the, way. The trialling is we're buying in cheaper legs of lamb for you to buy. We never yeah. stopped, but you know, it's just it's just what people wanna wanna read into and what they want to see. I think being in the industry, you're like, come on, you're just Yeah. Pulling the wool over people's eyes. No pun intended. A pun but, pun. Yeah. We can see that as they like, say as being in the trade, but it's you can't, you can't shout it to everyone. You can't get them to listen. No, no. But hey, here we are. We are where we are. So, what is the week ahead looking like for you, mate? Car shopping, car shopping, car fixing, phoning a garage, try and figure out if I can fix it without spending a million pounds because it's just really starting to become a bit of a headache now. Um, yeah. hopefully it's just a belt on the power steering because that bitch does not move when I'm trying to turn it was pre pretty hairy um, but apart from that Monday, Tuesday I've got 
days at Good Trees, and that's going to be breaking down some Wagyu's Monday. I've got some National Crust beef to break up on Tuesday. Nice. Which is pretty cool. It's big. Chunky, chunky beef, my friend. Is it? Yeah. But uh, I'll send you some pics. Um, yeah. And then Wednesday, I'm doing an afternoon and find a little farm shop local to me. I am then with you on Thursday, albeit hoping that I, you are. Like, I can get there. Fingers crossed. That's true. Um, and then Friday, I'm actually pretty free Friday. I might try and do some bit of artwork because I've got a few. Nice. I've got a couple of orders um, or requests for like quick sketches. And I haven't yeah. had time, to be honest. Um, oh, good. You can start working on my tattoo idea. Thanks, mate. <laughs> I can start working on your tattoo idea. And, uh, and apart from that, I can't actually be the only person that's got a, a fake duck tattooed on them. I know Johnny Farrell was certainly putting out some interest, wasn't he? I think he's he needs. Who else? I think he was like putting that out to me for me to go. Yes, please do because I don't. Know if yeah. Can. Rather than him just getting my artwork on him, which is uh, sort of frowned upon upon in the art world, if you will, you need to get. Oh, is it? You need to get the yeah. Of course, you want to get the permission of the actual artist. Oh yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I think that was that. But yeah, Johnny, go for it, James. If you're listening, tell Johnny um, that he can he can get that. That's it. It's fine. Uh, he has permission. Oh, and all of that is to be intertwined with. Mm-hmm. Running a child around to Holiday Club. So that'd be... Oh, nice. That'd be great fun. So we'll figure that out somehow. Such fun, Doug. Such fun. Jeez. It's all fun. Yeah. What about you? How's your week looking? Uh, back of the block tomorrow. Usual mm-hmm. Monday. Cleaning. Recovering from the weekend, as it were. Is Monday, then... your, Monday your reset day, is it? Yeah, Monday's always a kind of reset day. Just kind of get the lay of the land after the weekend. Sure. Deep clean the fridge, put all the usual kind of gubbins, catch mm-hmm. up on paperwork, all the all the fun stuff. Yeah. Uh, and then Tuesday, I am at the tattoo studio. Yeah. Get some more work done on my sleeve after for the first time in two years because tattoos are expensive. They are, which is why mm. I played the long game. And waited until my brother was a tattoo artist. Ah, uh, very. That's what I should have done. You don't have a brother, though. Oh. Yeah, so it would have been a long wait for him to become a tattoo artist. <laughs> don't have a brother, but he will be a tattoo artist. Yeah. <laughs> he will. He will be. Yeah. And but that's yeah. it, yeah. I mean, and then went after that, back, back to work. Yeah. Is that more on your Marvel? Sleep. Marvel, yes. I've got to get Where is she? There. Captain Marvel. Colours in. Mm-hmm. She has been black and white for too long. Yeah. And Hulk needs to be finished up the top. Whoa, I've never seen Professor Hulk. Nice. Professor Hulk. Now as often I get the guns out for you. No, I know. I was oof. 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 I was thinking, I was... But yeah, and that's it, and then just yeah, back back to work, really. Nice. Last Maybe. last two weeks of the summer holes, isn't that so? Yes, it is. Nearly there, mate. Nearly there. All good. Brilliant. It's been a good episode. Covered a few things. Lovely. Had some fun. Good to see your face again. Always fun to chat to you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Yeah, we must see each other more often. Shouldn't leave it 24 hours before we see each other, right? It's been too long. I didn't know what to do. It's too long. I'll let a bit of branding there. you got your branding. i got my branding on here, too. Yeah. EGB Butchery, UK Lions, shout out. Bit of fun butcher shop. Head butcher dog. Head butcher. I right, shout out Ryan the Burger King. Ryan the Burger King. If you're not following on Instagram, follow my apprentice, Ryan the Burger King. I love that you changed that. It's brilliant. I know. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much. Doug. Thank you. Um, just want to say, reach out to a friend, tell him you love him. Just... Say hey. It could that could be all that they need, right? And get your bums boobs hey. and balls checked. Hey. And we will see you in Friday's episode where we've got some great guests coming on. I may have said guests 
but we'll wait and see. Yes. I know. It's going to be a good one. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Bye.